Everybody hates seeing that excess pigmentation in the skin. And if you're one of those, you probably are wondering what you can do to reduce that pigmentation and to prevent it from happening in the first place. I'm Dr. Dustin, board certified dermatologist. And today I'm gonna share with you the best ingredients you can get over the counter to treat excess pigmentation, whether it's post-inflammatory pigment change, after acne bumps, or maybe something like melasma. There's quite a few options in this category, so let's jump right into it. Unwanted discoloration or pigmentation can certainly be frustrating but thankfully there's many different things that can help to treat it. Some of these ingredients are actually multi-purpose and we may have already talked about them in our series about wrinkles or in our series about acne. The number one thing I'm gonna lead off with today is vitamin C. Vitamin C is of course a potent antioxidant and as an antioxidant, it can help to prevent some of the damage that will lead to excess pigmentation. There's some evidence to show that it can block the tyrosinase enzyme in the skin and that's one of the things that helps lead to excess pigmentation. Just for reference, here's the tyrosinase pathway and it goes through several steps in order to become melanin in the skin. So there's several different things we'll talk about today that can block different steps along that enzymatic pathway to reduce unwanted pigmentation. Number two is kojic acid. This is a byproduct of fermentation of certain types of fungi. Kojic acid has been used in chemical peels and it's making its way into more and more over-the-counter skincare. It does have some inhibition of tyrosinase as well and it has been shown to be a potent antioxidant. Both benefits that we talked about with vitamin C that can help to decrease that unwanted pigmentation. We've seen effects of kojic acid to improve melasma and also to fade post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation after injuries like acne marks or other reasons to have a scar. Retinol remains an important way to help reduce unwanted pigmentation. Retinol can help to build healthy collagen in the skin and it helps to encourage healthy cell turnover. Along that melanin synthesis pathway that we referenced previously, the melanocytes transfer their pigment into keratinocytes and in certain conditions, that's why we have excess pigmentation. So helping to encourage healthy cell turnover can make a difference in the pigmentation that you see on the skin. Of course, retinol has to be used consistently. Like any of these products, they're not going to work overnight. So make sure you're in it for the long haul. Number four is niacinamide. Niacinamide is a really popular ingredient right now and it seems to have a lot of beneficial effects on the skin. It is a form of vitamin B3. Niacinamide has been shown to help interrupt the process of cell pigmentation. So it does have beneficial effects on reducing unwanted pigmentation and preventing excess pigmentation. Now, if you tend to get a lot of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation after acne, I would definitely incorporate niacinamide into your skincare routine because not only can it help with the pigmentation, but niacinamide has been shown to have some anti-acne benefits. Now, while niacinamide is a great ingredient, it seems to work best in combination with some of the other things that we've talked about. So don't rely on it alone to reduce your unwanted pigmentation. Number five is azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is also one of those things that can come from certain types of yeast or fungi. It is a dicarboxylic acid and it can help to suppress melanin synthesis in the skin. So it can work on that tyrosinase pathway that we already looked at. Some people may find azelaic acid to tingle on the skin a little bit or sting. And I find that that's the case with my skin when I get to higher concentrations, but I seem to do well at lower concentrations. Azelaic acid can be found over the counter or by prescription. So it's around 10% or less when you're getting it over the counter and a prescription is gonna be 15 to 20% azelaic acid. Another benefit of azelaic acid is that it's safe to use in pregnancy. So if you tend to get more acne during pregnancy, you can safely use azelaic acid to help treat the acne as well as reduce the risk of hyperpigmentation. There are so many alpha hydroxy acids that can help to reduce unwanted pigmentation. One of those that seems to be among the best is mandelic acid. Mandelic acid has been used in chemical peels in dermatology offices for a long time, and it's starting to make its way into some over-the-counter skincare. Like I said, it is an alpha hydroxy acid and it seems to be better than glycolic acid at reducing unwanted pigmentation. Because it is an alpha hydroxy acid, you do have to be careful with how frequently you use it if you're getting it in an over-the-counter skincare preparation. I recommend starting at one to two times a week and make sure you skip other ingredients like retinol if you're going to be using mandelic acid in your skincare routine. Also, don't be tempted to go for the highest concentration of any of these ingredients, especially things like alpha hydroxy acids. Start on the lower end so you don't damage your skin. If you break down your skin barrier, too aggressively, you can actually put yourself at risk of excess pigmentation, which completely defeats the purpose of what you're trying to do. Next up is arbutin. Arbutin can come from dried blueberries, the pear leaf, or bear berries. Essentially, this is kind of like a natural form of hydroquinone, which we'll talk about in a minute. 
As a natural alternative to hydroquinone, it can help to inhibit melanin synthesis in that pathway, again, that we've showed. That's where all this pigmentation is coming from. Arbutin is finding its way into more and more over-the-counter skincare ingredients, and I think it's very worthwhile to incorporate into your skincare routine if you're trying to battle unwanted pigmentation. Any discussion on excess pigmentation, I would be remiss if I didn't include a small discussion on hydroquinone. It has to be in there whenever we're talking about hyperpigmentation. Hydroquinone is one of the gold standard ingredients to help reduce unwanted pigmentation, particularly for patients who have melasma. Hydroquinone can be found over the counter. You can buy it online. I recommend not going above 2% if you're purchasing it without a prescription. If you do see a dermatologist, you can often get hydroquinone in concentrations of 4% or higher. In some circumstances, I'll prescribe it up to 12% in combination with things like kojic acid. There's a huge warning with hydroquinone, however. You can't use it for long periods of time. This should be something that you use for two to three months max and I really recommend that you do it under the supervision of a dermatologist. Using too high of a concentration of hydroquinone and using it for too long of a period of time can put you at risk for a condition known as ochronosis. Ochronosis, as you'll see in this picture, is an increased deposition of pigment in the skin. And the scary part about it is that ochronosis can be a permanent change to the skin. And again, if you're trying to treat pigmentation, the last thing you wanna do is make it worse and make it permanent. Most of the ingredients that we've talked about thus far are pretty safe to use on an ongoing basis, but hydroquinone just is not. So make sure you use that one under the supervision of a dermatologist. And I'm sorry, I have to do this one. You know that if you have excess pigmentation, you have to wear sunscreen every single day. Ultraviolet light is ultimately what triggers that melanin synthesis pathway in your skin. So if you protect your skin from the effects of ultraviolet light, you're not going to activate that pathway to the same degree, and you're going to significantly reduce your risk of developing excess pigmentation, whether it's from post-inflammatory pigment change of acne, whether it's from melasma, or a myriad of other conditions that could lead to unwanted pigmentation in the skin. If you're particularly sensitive to sunlight causing excess pigmentation, I highly recommend using a tinted mineral sunscreen. Those tinted sunscreens have iron oxides in them, which also help to reflect that heat away, that infrared light away, and some of that high energy visible light. If you're particularly sensitive, you're gonna be more likely to pigment even from those other sources of radiation, not just ultraviolet. So a tinted mineral sunscreen should really be in your repertoire. When you look at going and purchasing some of these things to help reduce unwanted pigmentation, don't feel tempted to start everything at once. You're gonna irritate your skin, so pick maybe two to three of these things and use them consistently, protect yourself from the sun, and you're likely to see the best results. If you found this helpful, go ahead and share it with somebody else that you think could benefit from this advice on reducing unwanted pigmentation in the skin. Thank you for sticking around and watching the video, and if you haven't had a chance to see them, be sure to check out my videos on hormonal acne and reducing and eliminating wrinkles through your over-the-counter skincare. I look forward to seeing you back on the next video. I'll catch you next time.